Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in the last few decades we've discovered quite a lot of really really unusual and completely wacky exoplanets. Some of them don't make any sense whatsoever, but nevertheless they do exist. And today we're going to talk about one such planet that was recently reanalyzed to discover that it has something extremely unusual on its surface. It seems to have a liquid cycle, an atmosphere, and also the ground itself made from the same material, in some sense kind of, I guess, how it is on Earth as well. It might even contain things like glaciers, but none of this is made out of water. The atmosphere, the liquids, the solids, none of this is H2O. All of this is silicate oxides, SiO2 in other words. It's quartz. All of this is made out of rock. The atmosphere is rock, the liquid is rock, and the solid is rock. In other words, the analysis suggests that this unusual exoplanet known as K2141b seems to be one of the most extreme and most unusual exoplanets we've discovered so far. The planet is a lava world where lava itself is in a liquid cycle. It creates the atmosphere, it creates the ocean that's approximately 100 kilometers deep if not deeper, and it of course creates the solid itself. And all of this of course is really mind-blowing. Which is of course why I wanted to talk about this, because it's a planet that truly exists out there, but imagining what it's like here would be very very difficult. So first of all, let's talk about the solar system and why the planet is like this to begin with. And actually the why question is very easy to answer. So imagine this is the solar system with the planet Earth located about 150 million kilometers away from the Sun. Well, in this particular star system, where the star is not actually that different from the Sun, it's a little bit less massive and it's a little bit smaller, this unusual planet orbits extremely close to its parent star, at a distance of about 0.007 astronomical units, which gives it an orbit of about 6.7 hours, one of the shortest orbits we've ever discovered, and it's literally right next to its star. Now imagine what's going to happen to planet Earth as soon as we start the simulation here. It's most likely going to start burning pretty quickly, and it's also going to turn into a level world. And that's of course why this planet is so unusual and why it has such unusual properties. But because this planet also has a partner in the system, there's another planet here slightly farther away, and also because the observations of this planet were done with at least one more telescope known as HARPS, that usually looks for planets by looking at very minute variations and velocity of the star itself, using both telescopes, the scientists were now able to identify the size, the mass, the density, and all of the other properties of this unusual planet. And so first of all, we've discovered that this planet is a lot denser than we originally believed. It seems to be slightly denser than planet Earth, meaning that it does seem to contain a lot of metals on the inside, inside of its core. Its mass is also around 5 times higher than planet Earth, with the total radius here being at least 50% larger than Earth as well. So this is what's known as a super-Earth. But in this case, this particular super-Earth also seems to contain an actual terrestrial uh, surface. In other words, it's not a gas planet, it's not a super puffy planet, and it's not a planet that has a very extended atmosphere. Instead, it truly seems to be some sort of a very large, really massive and really unusual level world with an actual liquid cycle being lava itself, rocks. And both of the planets are really really far away from the habitable zone of this planet, so we don't really expect either of these worlds to possess conditions necessary for life to survive, with the partner known as K2-141c being some sort of a Neptune-like gas giant planet. But what the scientists in the recent study did was essentially create really really complex weather simulations by using the parameters that we believe exist on this planet. And so since we know its size and its mass and we obviously know its density, we also know what's emitted from this planet by looking at various spectra coming from this particular star system, and since we also know the temperature of this planet based on the observations from the star, and we also know that this planet is tidally locked, always facing with the same side toward its star, we can then start simulating things like winds, things like oceans, and start figuring out how all of this interacts on the surface of the planet and how all of this creates various conditions both on the surface of the planet, inside the planet, and of course in its atmosphere. And because two-thirds of this planet are constantly bombarded by the solar radiation, with one-third seeing no sun whatsoever, this actually does create very unusual atmospheric effects. For example, the scientists believe that the wind speed here are approximately 1.5 kilometers per second or around 1 mile per second. 
That's ridiculously fast. That's faster than anything we have here in the solar system. Also, these temperatures are enough to melt quartz, so the magma ocean is definitely there as well. All of this is essentially like a huge lava ocean that's around 100 kilometers deep. But because these temperatures are so high, some of this lava, or actually a lot of this lava, evaporates, and it creates clouds. It also creates a lot of things similar to rain. Or I guess it is rain, but it's lava rain. And this lava rain slowly deposits back on the surface, in some sense acting very similar to how we have a liquid cycle here on planet Earth. And that's of course very similar to what happens on Titan in terms of the liquid cycle, but in this case, this is the complete opposite in terms of the temperature. Here, all of this happens at ridiculously cold temperatures, where the cycle is methane and ethane instead of water, or instead of quartz, or essentially silicate rocks, that are present on k 2141 b But what's even more unusual about this planet is that because its atmosphere is rocks, at some point, specifically somewhere around this point, the atmosphere here starts to precipitate because it cools down just enough, and eventually deposits back into the magma ocean. But unlike, for example, planet Earth or Titan, this planet does not have any other atmosphere. It is just way too hot here. It has a little bit of sodium in the atmosphere, but it's not enough to create actual thick atmosphere. And so that means that almost the opposite starts happening right here, especially on the dark side. Remember, the dark side of the planet never sees any starlight whatsoever, so the temperatures here drop really, really fast. According to the scientists in this paper, the temperature here drops from about 3000 degrees Kelvin on the bright side to only about 100 degrees Kelvin on the dark side. Or basically about 3200 degrees Celsius on the bright side and about minus 200 degrees Celsius on the dark side. These are some really, really huge extremes. The difference is very sudden and the effects they create are actually somewhat difficult to imagine because we don't have anything else like this in the solar system. This just means that by moving a few hundred kilometers on the surface here, the temperature would change by about a few hundred degrees. That's how crazy it gets here. Every kilometer, every mile is at least one degree difference. But unfortunately, all of this so far is only theoretical and based on essentially computer simulations. We still need to take a look at this with the new telescopes, such as the James Webb telescope, to confirm if we actually detect these effects as we predict them in this paper. And also, since we know that a lot of planets like planet Earth also started as lava planets when they were just born, it's somewhat important for us to take a look at this planet just to see how it develops and how it changes with time. And so, in some sense, this unusual world is one of the most fascinating planets we've discovered so far when it comes to extremes. It's definitely one of the most unusual liquid cycles we've ever found, and it's definitely a world that we would love to learn more about, simply to understand how our own planet evolved as well. But until we learn more about this planet, or until we discover other unusual exoplanets out there that just blow our minds, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. As always, you can learn more about the planet and the discoveries by reading the paper in the description below. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. Either way, on that note, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.